and welcome back to another episode of the Danish Daddy. Actually, now I'm Daddy Denmark, formerly known as Danish Daddy, until I found out that somebody else already was using that name. So, yeah, I'm now Daddy Denmark. Sorry, I was just looking after it. I've got my trusted uh, sidekick there, my daughter, Freya, who's uh, going to be playing in the background. Yeah, that's right. And making some noise to entertain you all. So today I was going to make you some delicious, kid-friendly, sugar-free, they're even vegan. Not that I'm vegan myself, but they just happen to be vegan little sweets. Yeah, so let's get into the ingredients here. Start out with the main ingredients with the dates. And before I jump onto the other ingredients, I'm just going to do something first here with these dates. We will take them off. As you can see, this is... As I've said before, my videos are non-edited, so occasionally things might go right or wrong, you never know. Get a bit of lukewarm water in this bowl. We've got 500 grams of pitted bait that we're going to use for this recipe. We'll make more than enough for We'll just take this, just a little bit of lukewarm water, we'll take these dates, and again pour into the lukewarm water so they can soften up a little bit. It won't take long at all. And don't be deterred by the fact that if like me you're not actually vegan. Trust me, when you taste these chocolate balls, you will not believe that they could be vegan, that something could be that delicious. But there are in fact many delicious vegan recipes out there that I've discovered myself having so many vegans in my family. Although, once again, I'm not vegan myself. Okay, next on the list is uh, some desiccated coconut. There we go. We've got some cocoa powder. We're talking about the proper cocoa powder, obviously, not like Milo or something like that. Got ourselves some coconut oil and we've got some almond flour. Almond flour is mainly to soak up some of the juices produced from the dates but it's also to kind of like give it like a marzipan consistent inside which is how you make marzipan you use almond flour. Okay before we begin let's just get the important out of the way which is making ourselves cup of coffee so we can survive the rest of the day. Here we go. Okay. Hopefully if I can, I will um, give you guys a few more tips on my way of parenting. Oh, it's not really my way, it's more like the Danish way. As we all know, Denmark is considered to be quite a liberal country. We have quite a Denmark always seems to rank quite high on those lists when it comes to childcare, living, this lifestyle and all that kind of thing. So I should I'll maybe teach you one of the tricks as to why that is. As I said in my previous video, I don't ever give my daughter any refined sugar. This here contains quite a lot of sugar, but it's natural sugar. There's no refined sugar. So they are very sweet. But another thing that I do with my daughter, maybe it's part of the Danish way. Okay. See, they've just been in here for five minutes now. That's all you need. Five minutes. You pour out most of the water. Most of the water. Just leave a little bit of water at the bottom, just so they have a little bit of juices. Put them into your food processor. And um, yeah. And we'll take some, it doesn't really, at this point it doesn't matter what order you put it in, you just have to put it all in. So take the almond flour here, take a cup, okay, this is not a cup, it's a glass, but who cares. There we go. 
One cup or glass almond meal flour, whatever you call it. Okay. We will take it. Desiccated coconut, half a cup slash glass. Mix it in. Oh, I forgot one ingredient actually. The trusted oats. Seems like there's always oats in my recipes, but that's because it's a good source of fiber. And fiber is good for everybody, kids and adults alike. So, we shall take one glass. Cup of oats. We shall pour that into the mixer. Okay, so that's it out of the way. Right. Like these old uh, coffee jars, we use them to store all the different ingredients in baking. Now we've got the cocoa, 100% pure cocoa. That open. We'll take three heaped spoons. Yeah, heaped. You want it to really taste of cocoa. That's what makes it so delicious. Okay, there we go. Now we want some coconut oil. Coconut oil is pretty much, aside from the water that was soaking with the dates, Coconut oil is pretty much the only fluid that will be in there, so we'll need quite a bit of that as well, but these are all perfectly safe, good ingredients, so you should never feel bad about using too much of it. Okay, let's blend it up. Maybe I should just put this in so it all doesn't end up in my face. Check the consistency. You don't want it to be too soft, too hard. Take out a little bit of it, put it in your hands, see how easy it is to form into a ball without getting too greasy. See? Quite good. Alright, so that's it. As you can see it's a very simple recipe. And trust me, when you try this, you will not believe, or even your guests that you serve this to will not believe that it contains no sugar. When you say to them, the base here are 100% vegan. Bowls, they will not believe it. First time I tasted them, I couldn't believe it myself either. No, nope. very simple. So, take a bit more, take a little bowl here. Take a little bowl. Pour some of this dissipated coconut out on there. We're going to roll them in that. Yep. Now, it just depends on how big you like. I have your energy, your sweet balls here. Okay. So I would suggest that once you've made them, that you put them in the fridge for probably a good hour. But you don't have to, you can eat them straight away. Now your hands will get a bit um, sticky from doing this because all the coconut oil will be seeping out of it. But that's as simple as that is. That's got to be the easiest recipe ever. Making delicious, I call them kid-friendly sweets, because like I said before, they may contain a lot of sugar, but it's all natural sugar. There's no refined sugar, so you can rest good about giving these to your kids without them going into hyperdrive. Now, what I was saying earlier about these parenting ways, it's not like I'm a child educator myself or teacher or 
such, you know, it's just, it's just my opinion on it. Like I said, I've been living in Australia now for 20 years. It just seems to me when you look at kids in this country, they, they seem to be smothered a bit, you know, they don't really get given like the freedom as much as um, other countries, especially like Nordic countries. Maybe that's just because that's where I'm from and that's what I'm used to. You see in kindergartens in Denmark, give a, get a, give a kid a plank of wood and a hammer and some nails, let them bang away there. Yeah, they might hit their hand with a hammer. They might poke their finger with a nail. They might get a splinter in their finger. They might come home with the cuts and bruises, but trust me, they've learned a lot. They've learned a lot being there out in nature, climbing trees, falling over. Kids learn more from falling over than they do from not falling over. It's kind of like the principle of chess. You learn more from losing than you do from winning. At least that's my belief. So if I have any advice to give to you parents out there, it would be to let your kids be kids. If you really want them to grow inwards, you gotta let them explore outwards first. You know, so next time you're in the park, you just let them pick up grass, let them pick up leaves and sticks, put it in their mouth. That's how kids learn. Don't be too fussy about a bit of dirt and stuff like that. And don't be too scared about them hurting themselves, falling over. That's what kids do. They need to fall over to learn about the world, you know. And once they've fallen over a couple of times, they'll stop falling over. They'll just hurt themselves in another way. And then once they've hurt themselves in those other ways a couple of times, they've learned from it. They won't do it again. Now, like before, like I said in my previous video, was that I don't entertain my daughter 24-7. I let her have the run of the house, you know. She can talk to herself, she can play with herself. I don't feel like I have to be there for her all the time and entertain her. She's, she's her own person and she learns a lot from just being on her own, you know. She learns how to interact with objects, you know, instead of you constantly being there for her and like having to show, oh, look, this is that, this is number one, this is number two, this is blue, this is green. Obviously, you still have to teach them these things, but they can still explore them on their own. So that's why I try to do maybe like a 50-50 ratio. 50% of the time, I'm sitting down there reading books with her showing her things in them, you know, like we talk about things in the house, you know, look at pictures of animals. The rest of the time, I'm not ignoring her, I'm just leaving her alone. That's the best way of putting it. I let her be her on her own. She knows she has the option to come up and talk to me if she asks me a question or something, or she just needs a bit of comfort or a hug or something. I'm always there for her. It's not like I'm just going to abandon her. but. Right now you can hear she's having a bit of a winch. Yeah, and a bit of a talk. Best way I deal with a bit of a winch is just to ignore her. Just to ignore her. Here we go. Delicious balls that are as sweet as any sugar-filled treats that you can buy in the supermarket and they're a lot healthier. So, thanks a lot for tuning in. Please subscribe and like my videos and um, look forward to making more videos in the future. Thank you. Signing out from Ellie Denmark. Enjoy.